Hello, my name is Ryan Fritz. I'm with Science of Cardio and I'm going to talk to you today about muscle activation technique or MAT. Muscle activation technique is a assessment tool that we use to look at joint and muscle function and we try to reset the neuromuscular system or the nervous and the muscle system to function better. If you want more information you can go to muscleactivation.com and I'm going to start out by going over a quick overview of MAT or muscle activation. Um, typically this is a process we look at range of motion as an assessment. We look at kind of each side right and left. Um, if there is a issue or problem with one side versus the other we'll do specific muscle strength testing and um, if that tests weak or strong we'll do a treatment um, or process of things to try to get that functioning or working then we'll go back and recheck or retest the strength and then we may look at the range of motion to see if that has improved or changed so essentially overall it's just the scientific method we have a problem we're trying to fix it and did our fix work or not so to kind of sum that up basically the range of motion is a driving factor we do the strength tests for an issue uh, they're either going to test strong or weak. If it tests strong, then we'll go on to a new area or new range. Um, if it tests weak, we'll do isometrics or palpation techniques. And then we will retest to see if what we did worked or not. Um, again, it's going to test strong or weak. If it tests strong, we'll go to a new range. Or if it tests weak, we'll just kind of re um, you know apply isometrics and retest after that and the process goes on and on if it keeps checking weak if it tests strong and we move on to other joints or other motions or movements so the um, the anatomy and the kind of the joints are very complicated um, essentially we're trying to look at things through motion so for me a good analogy is 2d versus 3d 2D is kind of an x-ray or a picture in a book or on your computer. Um, 3D is kind of a more complex or dynamic look of how a joint or muscles move. So it's kind of the moving part would be a 3D analogy and the non-moving part would be a 2D analogy. So we kind of just looking very specific at things, uh, how the body works and uh, you know functions through movement. So the MAT process, again, like I was saying, it uses a tool um, to assess kind of joints. So we're just, you know, very specifically checking how does this um, particular joint move or how does it function. Uh, it's a very objective range of motion test or look. Um, we try to put numbers or get a good idea of, you know, what uh, how does this function right to left and we're also looking at stability um, in addition to mobility so just because something moves well doesn't mean that it's strong so that's where the muscle testing comes into play um, we do the muscle testing to see if something's strong so if a range of motion is um, different than you know the other extremity then we want to kind of um, raise some questions about well, why is this not functioning or working the same as the other extremity so that's where muscle testing comes in we use specific directions force and time to figure out whether that area or joint or position is working or not typically if you put a muscle in a shortened or contracted position you have the maximal amount of fiber cross bridging so this lower picture in the left hand corner shows a bicep muscle contracting um, in that full kind of contraction position it should be the strongest the brain will send a signal down to the muscle the muscle will either say hey I can do this or not and then uh, it will send a signal back to the brain allowing that contraction to happen so if we don't get a strong um, contraction or the muscle not works properly then we'll use or apply low intensity isometrics again the keys to this is same thing direction force and time 
The force is very specific. It needs to be very low or less than 15% intensity. So this kind of goes into the conscious and subconscious. If I ask somebody to contract as hard as they possibly can, uh, that is a conscious thought of, hey, I need to tense up or tighten this muscle to do something. Subconscious is, you know, kind of the reflex of a doctor hitting your knee and your leg jumps. So we're trying to get to that subconscious kind of neural level with the nervous system and the muscle system. And then we apply specific isometrics uh, with those low intensities for six seconds, and we do six rounds or six sets of those. So kind of moving forward, how that all works is we find a range of motion problem and we put it in the shortened or contracted position. Uh, we do our testing and see if it's weak or strong. Um, you know, if it is weak, um, again, our body doesn't shut down and say, no, hey, I can't do this. It's going to compensate and it's going to use bigger, stronger muscles uh, to kind of take over that task or goal. Um, the key with MAT or muscle activation is called alpha gamma coactivation. So the brain will send a signal down the nerve to a muscle to contract something. It will release chemicals from the nerve into the muscle and then the body will either be able to apply force or not apply force depending on um, you know safety. If the body doesn't feel safe, then those chemicals are not going to go back through the nervous system up to the brain. Uh, it's going to go to another place in the body and say, hey, all right, let's use these muscles. So our MAT tool is a way of just checking and making sure and checking balances to see if things are working um, properly or not through alpha gamma coactivation. So kind of moving forward, again, how the body works. Essentially, our body is a giant uh, tent. We have these muscles that hold bone or our structure together. There's tensions in them. Uh, they pull and move and change our skeleton um, to you know, obtain or do things that we need to do for daily living. Uh, the big quote for muscle activation is stability is secondary to muscle weakness. So muscle weakness is going to be kind of the driving force on the body requiring or not requiring muscle contractions. So again, it's a safety mechanism. Your body is going to do whatever it needs to do uh, to stabilize and it is going to protect itself um, from getting hurt. So if something can't get accomplished, your body will do a compensation. So some compensations might be bending at a joint or shortening or rotating or maybe coming out of a plane. So it automatically kind of subconsciously says, hey, I can't do this. I'm going to um, do whatever I need to get the job done. A uh, great example is kind of the tent below on the screen. Uh, if you get rid of one of those straps or kind of those guide wires, uh, the tent's going to stay up. So it's going to put more stress or emphasis on some other um, supports or guide wires, but the tent will stay up. And our body works the same way. Things, you know, will work or not work, but everything will still accomplish goals and tasks. So that's kind of the key with uh, getting the body to work and function is we want to make sure that things are working right and not just getting things done. Uh, I'm going to save this demo for another time. Um, we'll talk about body mapping. So body mapping is cool. Um, if we have the human body or the skeleton and then also the muscle system, um, I just want to kind of make you aware that the muscles in the body all connect uh, in some way or another, and we really want to just be aware of, you know, kind of what's linked to what. Uh, so if we have a hip area, uh, we have muscles that come off your spine that go to your hip. They attach into other areas, maybe down the leg. Um, if you go to that middle picture, uh, you look at, and you see the spinal muscles. So those muscles go all the way from the tailbone all the way following the spine up to the skull, or it's called the occipital lobe. 
Um, those muscles, again, if they're not functioning properly, they might require other muscles or areas to pick up the slack or fire or, you know, overwork um, for certain areas. So you might have a shoulder issue that might be generated or caused by a hip weakness. So we're really looking at kind of the chicken or egg. Just because we have a pain somewhere doesn't necessarily mean that's what's causing or the, um, you know, the main driver or the reason why we're having pain or issues. So something to think about. Uh, and then magnitude. So if a joint is dysfunctioning, um, you know, this joint can cause us pain. It can cause injury if we have, you know, enough injury uh, that might lead to surgeries. And, you know, maybe surgeries might lead to joint replacements if uh, things can't get corrected. So to kind of tie us into MAT, you know, we look at range of motion. Range of motion dictates everything. It tells us whether things are functioning or dysfunctioning. If things aren't functioning, then the body will do compensations. It'll use other muscles or, you know, other things to do or um, accomplish goals. Um, the downside of that is, is we can have opposing muscles or different muscles get overworked or overused, and that can cause injury or pain. Um, so that's kind of the crossroads. Do we, you know, do we just keep pushing through that injury or pain, or do we uh, try to fix it through surgery, or do we try to do it through less evasive means? Um, you know, eventually if we keep having surgeries and it doesn't get fixed and those problems are still theirs with the functioning of the joint, then the joint may have to be replaced. So these are just some thoughts and some things if you're, you know, uh, performance uh, athlete or competitor, you might have a lot of things that are driven off of kind of your performance, your body. Um, and how you function. So just something to think about cost-wise. And then um, I want to discuss kind of the application of MAT or muscle activation. Um, I personally use it with exercise, uh, and this can go for any exercise, um, whether it's in the weight room or you know out in the field or you know on a track, running, biking, swimming, rowing, whatever it is. Um, but this tool is really neat because it allows us to assess stability and range of motion. Um, I use it, you know, in a couple different ways. I, I can test or check things out before somebody does an exercise or a movement. I can check it during an exercise or movement. So if somebody's, you know, running 20 miles or so, we can go halfway and check and see what the stability of a joint is. Or I can also go after an exercise or movement and say, hey, how did the body work? So if we have a weakness, we can address it and fix it. And, um, you know, we can go back and look at it later on if there's an issue. Again, we're just applying the scientific method to figuring things out. So integrations, I basically find out, you know, what is strong and stable, what works, what doesn't work, and how can we progress or regress things depending on people's um, function or how they're working. And the MAT tool also allows me to look at reassessments, you know, is what we're doing working or is it not working? How can we adjust something to make things work better or have less problems or issues? And then I always, you know, tell and have people come in for tune-ups or kind of rechecks get their body working back online again. So discussion topics, usually we have people um, asking questions. Most common question is how long does it last? And that depends on person to person. So some people might be fixed after one session. Some might take a while, a couple sessions and different modalities to fix. And then MAT can be done, the isometrics can be done on yourself, but the testing should be done with somebody who is a professional. So here's my contact information. This is my email address and website. And I encourage you, if you get a chance, to go to um, muscleactivation.com and find out more information about MAT or muscle activation. So thank you.